Okay, pop quiz time. Can you tell the difference between these two streaming devices? One is the updated Amazon Fire TV Stick, and the other is the new Fire TV Stick Lite. It's a new addition to the company's lineup that comes in around $10 cheaper than the standard Fire TV Stick. But what do you gain by going with a regular TV stick? Or put another way, what did Amazon have to cut to shave 10 bucks off the asking price? Well, it turns out not a whole lot, actually. If you're looking for some low-cost streaming options and can't decide between these two extremely similar devices, hopefully this video clears things up a bit. This is a Cord Cutters News review of the Amazon Fire TV Stick and Fire TV Stick Lite. What's new with the Amazon Fire TV Stick and Fire TV Stick Lite? Okay, so to start, we've got a new version of the Fire TV Stick. Now, that's the non-4K version of this form factor, so it makes the most sense for 1080p and other non-4K displays. And that used to be the budget model in this particular lineup. But Amazon spiced things up a bit this year by introducing this, the Fire TV Stick Lite. This new model also maxes out at 1080p, but cuts a few features here and there, resulting in a lower overall price. And we'll get into exactly what's different and how these two compare in the next couple of sections. But it's worth mentioning that Amazon says both of these new budget streaming sticks represent a performance improvement over last year's Fire TV stick. And yes, we're going to test that claim as well. Hardware and features. As for hardware and features, the new Fire TV Stick and Fire TV Stick Lite are more alike than they are different. In fact, during our testing of these devices, I had to resort to sticking a post-it on one of these to more easily tell the two apart. Now here's a quick overview of the specs we're dealing with here, and you're gonna see a lot of similarities between the two. Both are based on the same processor, a quad-core design with a clock speed of 1.7 gigahertz, and they're also using the same graphics hardware and working with the same amount of RAM. And you'll also see they both support up to 1080p resolutions and up to 60 frames per second. The two devices also support high dynamic range video in the form of HDR10, HDR10+, and HLG, or Hybrid Log Gamma. And of course, if you'd like to learn more about HDR or high dynamic range video, may I direct you to our earlier video on the subject. We'll have a link included down below in the video description as well as up here in the top corner as well. Moving on, it's all basically the same until we get to advanced audio support. Here the Fire TV Stick supports onboard Dolby Atmos processing, whereas the Fire TV Stick Lite will only support the standard via pass-through. That means if you're watching something that offers Dolby Atmos sound support, the Fire TV Stick Lite won't do any processing of the standard on its own, but it will pass that data on to other devices in your setup, like say if you have a connected and compatible AV receiver, so that device can properly process Dolby Atmos for you. And then we get to perhaps the biggest and more impactful difference between these two, and that's the included remote controls. Side by side, it might take a second or two for the difference to fully register, but the Fire TV Stick's included Alexa voice remote boasts a couple of controls that the Alexa voice remote Lite lacks. So by going with the more expensive version, you get a remote with a power button, volume up and down controls, and a mute switch. The Fire TV Stick Lite's remote doesn't come equipped with those controls, but still includes buttons for controlling media playback, activating Alexa, accessing the guide, and more. And that's basically it as far as major differences between these two go, and the similarities continue into setting up and actually using the Fire TV and Fire TV Stick Lite, which brings us to setup and performance. So before we get into performance numbers, let's touch on setting these two devices up. And as you might imagine, the setup process is basically the same regardless of which one you choose. If you have an existing Amazon account you'd like to associate with the device, you can do that during setup or you can choose to create a new one to associate with your new Fire TV device. You'll be asked to plug in your Wi-Fi login credentials and you'll also have the option of installing some of Amazon's recommended services including Hulu, Disney Plus, and others. And if you don't select any apps in this section, that's totally fine too. You can always just download them later and add them to your Fire TV device. And once you've completed the setup process, you'll be greeted by the Fire TV home screen. And that features a few main sections along a top navigation bar. And those sections include things like search, home, live for your live TV options, your videos, free, movies, TV shows, apps, and settings. On the home screen, you'll see a section for your apps and channels called, well, your apps and channels. If you scroll all the way to the end of that horizontal list, you can click on the See All button to access a grid view of all of your apps. And while you're in that grid view, you can also reorder and rearrange your apps so that your favorites are closer to the top. Just highlight a particular app and hold the Selection button down until you see a prompt along the bottom of the screen. At that point, you can use the directional buttons on your remote to move the app to wherever you want. And then you can press the selection button one more time to place it in its new location. 
Elsewhere on the home screen, you'll also see recommendations via Prime Video and other services you might be subscribed to. Scroll farther down and you might also uncover suggestions based on genres like action comedies, movies and shows based on true stories, or war movies. Voice search works as expected. Regardless of which model you have, you can press and hold the microphone button on your remote to speak your queries. And that includes searching for content via title, genre, actress or actor, and more. And you can also open up apps by saying things like open Hulu or load up Netflix. So all in all, these two Fire TV devices behave more or less like Fire TV devices. But what about a performance? Are you giving up anything by going with a cheaper model? Well, that's why we do performance tests. And if you've checked out some of our recent hardware reviews, you might be familiar with our app gauntlet, so to speak. So in order to test performance, we time how quickly these devices can load a series of apps in succession. We start with a freshly restarted device and ensure none of the apps are already running in the background. That way we get as close to a baseline consistent performance as possible. And then we run these devices through the same test suite at least three times to get a solid average. And for the Fire TV devices, our suite of apps consists of Netflix, YouTube, Prime Video, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, ESPN, Pluto TV, Sling TV, and Crunchyroll. And then we load up Netflix one more time to see if the device can load the app any faster the second time through. Okay, preamble out of the way, how did these two compare to each other? Well, they performed more or less like each other. The standard Fire TV stick eked out a very, very slight performance win in the end with an average time of 116.7 seconds, compared to the light's 118.51. And given the variance between test runs, I think it's safe to say these two devices feature essentially identical performance. But what about last year's Fire TV stick? After all, Amazon did say this new version boasts significantly better performance, so how does it compare? Well, we loaded up all the latest versions of Fire OS and the featured apps and ran last year's model through the same gauntlet, and the results show a clear advantage for the 2020 models compared to last year's TV stick. Both new models routinely loaded each app faster than the 2019 vintage. So if you're rocking last year's Fire TV stick and you're looking for a cheap gateway to faster performance in app loading and menu navigation, well, you've got a couple solid options here. And we also pitted these new Fire TV sticks against Roku's similarly priced Roku Express to see how they stack up. And here are the results. As you can see, these 2020 models win some stages and lose others, but overall, they come away with significantly faster times. And they also seem to handle juggling several different apps easier than Roku Express, which had to load a few apps in and out of memory during our test course. All in all, a strong performance from the Fire TV sticks here. Wrapping it all up. So in the end, it is a bit odd that Amazon chose to release two budget streaming devices so evenly matched in terms of features and performance. But release them they did, and here's where we think they stack up. If you don't care at all about Dolby Atmos support, and you can live without dedicated TV controls like volume and power, then the new Fire TV Stick Lite is a bargain at $29.99, although we've already seen it for even cheaper with the holiday season fast approaching. On the other hand, if you'd rather have the convenience of those extra controls on the included remote, the updated Fire TV Stick isn't too pricey a step up at $39.99. And again, don't be shocked to see this one on sale a lot this fall and winter as well. Compared to the competition, both devices put up a solid fight against the likes of Roku's similarly priced Express streaming device. It's also worth pointing out that both the Fire TV Stick and TV Stick Lite can hide hidden away out of sight and out of mind behind your TV, and you don't need line of sight for the remote control to work, and that's not the case for Roku's Express. So if you have, say, a secondary non-4K TV or a computer display you'd like to convert into a smart streaming device, both the Fire TV Stick and Fire TV Stick Lite offer solid, capable, and affordable options. And thank you all for tuning in to this week's review. If you haven't noticed by now, we've been covering a lot of hardware of late as companies release their latest gear for the holiday season. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to check out some of our recent coverage, and please do consider clicking those like and subscribe buttons down below. On Wednesdays, Jess hosts a live Q&A session with our viewers and subscribers. On Thursdays, we dive deep into a specific topic like, say, hardware reviews or new technology. And then on Friday, you can catch up on the latest cord cutting and streaming news with Cord Cutting Weekly. Until then, my name's Philip Palermo. Thanks again for watching. Take care.